Team CV, Victor here with Celebrating Victories, giving y'all another video. So right now, in this video, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to do a little Q&A. So I get tons of questions all the time in my email, in the comments. So what I did is I consolidated, I consolidated a lot of them, and um, I put them on a piece of paper, and I'm going to go through each one that I've gathered and share this information with you. This is going to be a long video, but I want y'all to check it out. There's going to be some good information on here, especially if you're new to the channel. Um, also, in the end or later in the video, what I'm going to do today, because actually I have to... In a few hours, I have to meet up with um, a new ATM business owner to help them install an ATM. Okay, so I do do that sometimes if they're in my local area. Um, so I'm going to do that for him and um, you'll be able to see a little bit of that. Um, if you guys are new to this channel, don't hit the subscription button. Watch this video and watch three or four other videos. I have over 60 or almost like 70 videos on this, in, on this channel as of right now. So I want you to watch a couple of those. And if you watch them, if you enjoy them, then subscribe to the channel, okay? Um, hit the like button if you do find this helpful. Be sure to share this information with your loved ones or family members. That way we could be a blessing upon blessing upon blessings and help other people out um, so that way they can maybe generate a little bit of passive income, okay? So let's dive right into it. Question number one, how did I get started? Okay, I got started in, what is it, February 2019, around that time frame. Um, I ended up getting out the Army in 2017, started up my dog training company, and I actually have a video on how I got started. I'm going to put that in the, in the link description um, as well as a card on top. So I got started by first starting my dog training company. I did that for about almost a year and a couple months, I think. And then um, I generated some really decent money on there. I saved up a lot of money doing that. And what I ended up doing um, the following year, the following full year, um, I ended up, you know, purchasing my mentor's course, which is Carrie Buck. A lot of you guys know her. Um, and if you're looking into getting a mentor, be sure to check my video description. I got some information that can help you guys out and get you linked up with her. Um, but I started with her. Okay, I spent some money on her course. I spent some money on a few ATMs. Um, and that's kind of how I got started in a nutshell. Again, check out my How I Started video. I'm going to put that in the description like I mentioned too. And there's like the full-blown description on how I got started in the ATM business. How many ATMs do you own? Right now, I have nine ATMs total. Okay, I started out with like three or four. Um, I put those in different locations. And every single time, every single month, what I do is I don't spend my ATM money. What I do is I just reinvest it into my, um, into my business or I save it. Okay, and I just put it away and maybe reinvest it for a new ATM when I need to. Um, and, and or if I'm, I have like a location that's super far away or a location that's, um, you know, firing on all cylinders and, you know, a lot of people are using it and it goes through money fast, then I'll reinvest it and put it into that ATM. That way it doesn't, um, I don't have to go as often. Maybe it could take me about a month before I go fill it up or maybe a few weeks, you know. But on average, I usually go about every couple weeks to uh, refill an ATM. Okay, what type? locations do I have all right right now I have like I mentioned I have about nine ATMs and I have a few barbershops I have uh, restaurants I have um, clothing stores like real uh, little retail stores what else do I have um, nail salon I have a nail salon and I have an auto mechanic store okay the auto mechanic store is new um, so I'm seeing that and then I also have a laundromat as well so I have a few different ones out there how do you get paid in the ATM business um, for me, in my case, there's a lot of different ways to get paid in the ATM business. Um, I have videos on all this stuff. Um, but for me personally, the main way I get I get income from it is through my ATMs that I have placed in different locations. And when everybody or when someone uses that ATM specifically, um, they want to take out twenty dollars. They want to take out a certain amount of money. They're gonna insert their card. They're gonna put their pin. They're gonna do all that information, and then dollar bills are gonna come out, right? Like if they want eighty dollars and four dollar, four twenty dollar bills, I usually use twenty dollar bills. And you could change the don denomination uh, for your ATM, whatever, whatever you want to put in there. Um, but on average, as you guys know, most ATMs they put twenty dollars in, twenty dollar bills. So 
once they take out that money, once that money comes out of the ATM, what's gonna happen is the $20 is gonna go from their account into my account, and then I'm gonna get paid whatever the surcharge fee is. So you know that little charge that you get, whether it's $3, $4, not from the bank, but from the actual ATM, because um, you do have bank fees. A lot of people have bank fees as well, which their bank will, will um, charge them 250 or a dollar or whatever it is, and then you got the surcharge on top of that. So the business owner of the ATM, or, or the business the owner of the ATM is the person that actually gets that surcharge okay so don't get it twisted between what the bank is taking out and then what the surcharge is taking out so a good example would be like most banks it seems like and correct me if I'm wrong and every bank might be different but you might see like a transaction on your if you used an ATM you might see a transaction of like um, 25 50 okay and the reason why you see 2550 but you only took out a $20 bill is because maybe you know um, the surcharge was three dollars okay and then you so you had the, you had that twenty dollars plus the surcharge which, which was a uh, three dollars and then um, you have whatever I said and then you have the the two dollars and fifty cents that your bank is taking from you for using their eight uh, an ATM that isn't theirs I hope that makes sense I don't want to confuse anybody but either way in a nutshell I get paid but when people use the ATM I get paid the surcharge and the money that I have into the ATM gets recycled back into my account okay um, so I hope that makes sense guys I hope that's clear I uh, see cost of an ATM and what is the return on investment I should expect so the cost of an ATM for me I usually pay about twenty three hundred dollars okay they can range they can go a little bit lower than that they can go up to five five thousand dollars it just kind of depends on the ATM that you're getting um, it also depends on you know what type of services you're getting along with it there's different things out there uh, but for me it's like twenty three hundred dollars and then the return on investment for the company or for the business as a whole, um, it just depends. There's not like just one, just like real estate, like, uh, yeah, just like real estate, right? People can't just say, well, my if I get into the real estate industry, you know, my return on investment is going to be this. There's no set number because it varies so much. There's so many variables that are in the industry um, that can fluctuate your, your return on investment, make it higher, make it lower. And so it's mostly going to depend on the location that you have. So if I'm paying that twenty three hundred dollars, you know that's that's twenty three hundred dollars that I'm spending. Then whatever I, it costs me to buy an ATM modem, in, internet modem, and then the amount of money that it costs or that I'm going to put into the ATM because you need to put your own money unless you get like a loan or you get other people to help you with that. And there's different ways around that. And again, I have videos on all this stuff. Um, but whatever you're putting in is like. You know, an average person could put in two thousand. You could put on four thousand. You could put ten thousand. You could put a hundred dollars in. You could put five hundred dollars in. It just kind of depends on what you're putting in, and depends on that location. Because if you're really putting five hundred dollars in an ATM, and especially if it's a really good spot, and that five hundred dollars goes in a day, then you're just gonna be recycling and refilling money into that ATM every single day, and that's not really logical. Because the whole point of doing all this is to set up passive income, and not really have to depend on going every single day um how's that? you know what i mean so i hope that makes sense guys so to answer your question it varies okay um if you're paying twenty three hundred dollars for an atm and let's say you put in a location and that late location is making five hundred dollars a month that's not bad you know there's the atm locations that you can find that are a thousand dollars or sometimes even more but um, five hundred dollars isn't bad at all. So you just do the math. Five hundred for um, or you're paying twenty three hundred dollars for an ATM. Five months, you're already gonna make your money back. Okay, plus like money for like an LLC to start up an entity, or if you're getting insurance on an ATM, you know the the amount that costs. You know, so it just kind of depends. You don't need to get insurance, but you know it could be a good idea. Um, the amount of gas that you're spending to go fill the ATM. So there's a lot that goes into it. But I think it just varies, you know, it's a good question though. What is a good amount to get started? All right, this is a really good question as well. Um, the amount to get started, for me, I had a lot of money saved up for my dog training company um, because I, I invested a lot of money from that into my into my ATM business. So you don't, you're not gonna need as much as I had and how much I put in. Um, but it just depends, again, it depends on which route you wanna go. Like for me, again, I purchased my mentor's training which was super expensive but it was super worth it as well um you know it was a, an investment that's gonna make me more money less mistakes less time 
you know um so i thought it was it was good for me now if you're trying to do it just like with just an atm setting up an llc setting up the internet modem um no insurance um what else you know just that stuff you're probably looking at and i'm putting the money into the atm right um you're probably looking at about four thousand dollars to be honest now is it is that the right way to do it it just kind of depends you know it depends how much risk you're willing to take um how many bumps and bruises you're willing to take because like for me the route that i went going back to like hiring my mentor to teach me everything that she learned and pretty much me having her in my pocket where if i had a question or i needed some some sort of research resource i had her right there and i could just hit her up and like hey what, what do i do in this situation where i go from here what you know that's kind of what i purchased which again was totally worth it now if you're not getting that and maybe you get a location and you don't have a contract you, or you don't have a contract that's 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 looked over by a lawyer and you know what i mean and then you get into some sort of like scruffle with the business owner or disagreement and you don't have any contract to back you up that could be a potential problem you know what i mean that could be a a, 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 co a money costing problem you know so things like that are just are are important but again it goes back to how much you're going to invest into the business how much you're going to how much money you're going to put into the atm what atm you're going to buy are you going to buy um, insurance are you going to buy education are you going to hire someone to place the atm for you um, are you going to hire a money loader or cash loader you know there's way so many different um variables that are involved to kind of answer this question um but that the cost can be if you just want to like bypass everything and really just find a cost at the very very minimal you know two twenty three hundred dollars for an atm one thousand dollars to put into um the the atm you know that's twenty three hundred let's say you want to you got to start up an entity so about three hundred dollars to 150 to start up an entity so you guys do the math okay um good question though who fills up the atm I fill up my ATMs, okay? But again, like I kind of mentioned in the last, you know, question, you can get a, a cash loader. And a cash loader is just somebody that you're paying or maybe you're giving them part of your surcharge to fill up the ATM for you. That way you don't have to worry about it. That's, that way you don't have to deal with it. Um, and it frees up more time to maybe find new locations and deal with other locations or, you know what I mean? So, but for me personally, and my recommendation, if you're just getting started, you know, one, you want to learn the ins and outs of your business. Any good business owner um, at some point in time, especially in the very, very beginning of a, of a new business, does and should know every single part and set every single aspect of their business. So like for me and my dog training company for the whole first year, I did every single thing of it, right? I obviously trained the dogs, obviously took them out to go potty, fed them, cleaned them, bathed them if I need to bathe, you know, cleaned them the location, disinfecting, all that stuff, you know, talking to clients, doing private lessons, meeting with them, doing transactions, doing, you know, bookkeeping. I did every single aspect of my business um, because I want to be able to know it and like the back of my hand, just in case if I do hire someone and they fall down or they get, you know, they don't, they can't do it anymore. I know what I'm doing. I have, you know, the knowledge and the capability of doing it myself. So same thing with the ATM business, you know, you want to be able to know the ins and outs of it. You should know how to load it. You should know how to program it. You should know how to install it. You know, you should know how to uninstall it. Um, you should know how to, you know, um, carry an ATM to a location, you know, you should deal with, know how to deal with processing, you should know how to deal with troubleshooting stuff, how to fix the jam, right? All these things are super important and you should know. And I got good news for you. If you look at my channel, I got over 70 videos on here. There's videos on pretty much everything that I just talked about. Okay. So you just got to dive into them. And if you're looking for a mentor and getting more intimate, you know, um, training or more intimate help, y'all can check Carrie out. All right. So that's a good question. All right, let's see what else. What's next? Um, how much should I expect to put in the ATM? Again, a lot of variables are involved in here. Um, a good number to start with, I would say if you can, is $2,000. Um, and, and go up from there. Like I, there's locations where I put four to five, six thousand dollars depending on um, the location, the distance and the performance of it. If it goes through money a lot faster, I'm gonna put more money in there more often or less often by, um, um, by having more money in there. 
pretty much. Okay, if I'm at a slow location, you know, I might be able to put a put a thousand dollars in there and then come back in a week, week and a half, um, which is super slow, right? So it just kind of depends on the location and depends on on your time frame, right? If you have a full time job, um, and this is another question that I, I have on here, um, if you have a full time job, it might it might behoove you to put in you know, more money, that way you're not working at two o'clock in the afternoon and you're getting off at six o'clock PM and there's no money in there because you just did your last transaction, not at ATM is sitting without any money and, and at the busiest time of the day. All right, you wanna put more that way, you're, it's gonna last you and you're not gonna deal with those things. And you can say, oh, okay, I have $500 in right now. I know it's starting to get low. I'm gonna be working tomorrow. Let me go fill it up tomorrow morning. Let me go fill it up right now. So those are things you just wanna take in consideration and think about. Okay, how do you find locations? Um, I, again, I have tons of videos on how I do this, but good ways to do it is just you know walking through different plazas, walking through different markets, and and, and kind of just walking in locations and, and talking to business owners. You can use Google search, you can go online and Facebook, you can do all these different things and just do research and call people and call business owners trying to talk to business owners. Um, I have a video utilizing OfferUp. Uh, Facebook Marketplace is another thing. There, there's tons of different locations. The same way you would look for places to go eat are the same ways you could find locations, okay? Um, there's different different ways to, to go about it. Just talking to business owners that you have already or just talking to family and friends saying, hey, you know, I'm opening up a business, uh, ATM business. Do you have any ideas where I can put an ATM that doesn't have one that might be a great spot where you can get your ATM in there, okay? Um, so there's a lot of ways. What makes a location good or bad? This is a really good question. Um, one thing, if you're getting into the industry, if you're getting into the ATM business, one thing that you're probably, chances are, you're probably going to do is, especially if you do this for long enough, is probably move locations. I've done it. I have videos on it. Okay. What I mean by that is I put an ATM in the location thinking it's going to perform decently well. It doesn't perform up to par and I take it out and I put it in a new location. And those are all things that are in my contract that give me the, the leverage to be able to do that. Okay. Um, so... I say all that because you want to minimize having to take ATMs out and move them as much as possible. It does happen. It's part of the job, part of the business. But if we can avoid it, then absolutely we should. So a few things to look for when you're looking for a location or what makes a good or bad location, right? That's the question, is going to be foot traffic. So a good rule of thumb is going to be um, like every 100 people that walk into it, three to five people are going to use it. All right, so three to five percent of people that go through that go into that location are going to use it. Obviously, that number can go higher if it's a cash-only location. Um, you know that that's something that taking take into consideration. So I guess the prime location would be cash-only location with tons of tons of foot traffic. You know, hundreds and hundreds of people going a day. That's going to be the best location. All right, so those are two factors that you want to like look into when you are considering a location. Um, do they accept? Do they, do they accept credit card? Do they take tips on ca with cash only? Or you know, there's so many different things, so many questions you want to ask. But again, watch some of my videos. You'll see I have tons and tons of videos on how to like communicate with business owners and how to like persuade them to get me an ATM in there. The questions that I ask, I always ask how many transactions they do, how many people come in a day, um, things like that, because that's really really good to help out. Damn, it's in 19 minutes already. Okay. Um, okay. How does money get into your account? That's going to be the next question. How does money get into your account? Your account. So this is going to be done through your processor. So when you have your ATM set up, or when you're planning on buying an ATM and getting it all set up, you're going to have to have the, a processor. And the processor is pretty much the the guy or the person or the company that you don't see in the background that kind of does the wire transfers and, and all those things back and forth from the owner or from the um the person that's using the ATMs bank to your bank and then back. So it's, it's kind of all over the place, but that's kind of how you get paid. So from there, what's going to happen if someone puts a card into your ATM, they select, I want to take out $40. Boom, boom. They put their pin in. Then what ends up happening, the ATM goes through a system and it shoots information to the processor. The processor shoots information to their bank account and their bank. Their bank confirms that they have the $40 in their account. Then the transfer happens and from the processor to your bank or to the ATM, the, it tells the ATM, hey, let the $40 go. They're good to go. And then all that process and during that time, 
that forty dollars that was in their account that they just took out of their account so that way they can pull it out the atm is going to go back into your account plus the three dollars surcharge or whatever that you set for them to um have to be charged in order to utilize your services of having cash at their disposal that's pretty much how it works okay and that's how i get paid and that happens every month usually i get paid every um on the like what between the 9th and 11th of each month i'll get paid and i like to get paid in a lump sum with all my um surcharge fees okay <sighs> let's see um pros and cons i have a video about talking about the pros and cons of an atm business but i'll kind of touch up on it right now a lot of pros very little cons um so the pros are you know semi-passive income Okay, you're getting paid without having to, you know, work as hard as compared to like having an actual storefront location or doing some type of service. I work harder on my dog training service or company than I do, obviously, than I do with my ATM company. Um, and it frees up that time to be able to do that. So, you know, all you really have to do is just go to the locations, fill, AT, fill the money up and, and pretty much you do that as often as you need to. And that's pretty much it as far as like that goes. Um, good money can come can be coming out of it. Our getting paid every single month is good. Um, good return on investment. If you compare like building a, or having a ATM company versus real estate, you know real estate usually has. Um, and I'm not talking about like wholesaling or real estate or anything like that. I'm talking about you know just like buying a house, buying an ATM versus you know um with real estate you, there's a lot more paperwork involved there's a lot more steps involved there's a lot more variables involved a lot of more different parties involved right families and and you know there's there's tons of different things that are involved with that and then you're having to usually spend a lot more money um uh, maybe a hundred thousand dollars for a decent house versus two thousand dollars for an atm you know and then your return on investment usually what like eight hundred dollars that you can get from rent maybe a thousand dollars but if you're looking at a thousand dollars for rent then you're probably spending a lot more money on your investment uh, for that actual property um versus having that two thousand dollars and then potentially making eight hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month even three hundred dollars a month that's going to be a lot better you're going to get you're going to make your money a lot faster utilizing atms than you would or pay that money back um to the atm utilizing ATMs versus, you know, get the money back from the investment that you put into real estate. Not saying that real estate is bad, that's something I'm definitely gonna get into as time moves forward, but that's kind of the difference, okay? There's not too many cons. Some cons are gonna be, you know, having to travel to di different locations and meet people and, and talk to people. And I, for me, that's a positive, I, I like to talk to people. Um, but one con is gonna be safety. Okay, a lot of people have that like, oh, well, what if I get robbed or, you know, how safe is the business? And to be honest, you know, the likelihood of someone kind of stealing your ATM, if you have it bolted down, because you can bolt it down. I have videos on all this stuff too. Insurance, if you feel like you need insurance, security cameras, alarms, all those things are at our disposal and all those things we can actually use. So if you're using those things, something, you know, I really wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, I always stay strapped. I always have carry. I have concealed carry. So that's something I highly recommend to anybody that's getting into the business. Go and get your concealed carry. Um, so, you know, those are things to protect yourself and just being uh, being able to, to do and being able to, um, you know, protect yourself. Either way, again, I have a video on how to stay safe as well. So you guys can check that out too. All right, next question. Do you install the ATM yourself? Again, I mentioned this before, I install it myself. I enjoy installing it. It's really, really simple. If you just have the right tools, um, it's really, really simple. Again, I have videos on how to do an exact install. You can check that out as well. Um, but yes, to answer your question, I do install it myself. Um, can you do this working a nine to five? I, I kind of answered this already. Um, but yes, you can do this working a nine to five. I'll start with maybe like one or two ATMs, put it in a location, see how it does add add um some more money if you need to if you feel like you just can't get to it in time add some more money into that into that atm that way you can free up more time while you're doing your nine to five and that way you're not getting tied up in the situation where you're at work and then the money you know um goes low and then you don't fill it up in time and it goes empty and then you have people like trying to get money and they can't we don't really want that the good thing about the industry and no matter usually 
each processor does this, they have a system where you can actually track how many ATMs and you can even get notifications through text message and email where your ATM, you know, sends you a text and like, hey, you only have $250 and you might want to go fill it up, you know, things like that. So that can definitely help you in that way. It gives you, and you can set that up even higher to like $500 where you get notified. Okay, so those are definitely things that I think can help, especially if you're working at nine to five, regular full-time job. Should you buy used ATMs? I don't recommend it. Um, I know people that have done it. I haven't done it. Um, you can get good deals out there, but you just have to be smart. If you're if you're just starting this out and you have never used an ATM before, you have never bought one, don't go out and buy a used one because there's a lot of uh, variables involved into this that you need to you know kind of check the box on to make sure that you're not getting scammed. Okay, don't try to go on eBay and start looking for you know ATMs and buying ATMs on Craigslist or used trying to get refurbished ATMs. You don't want to deal with any of that stuff because again, a lot of stuff needs to happen in order to make the the um, ATM valid and so that you're not getting sued okay like the little there needs to be braille on it there needs to be a certain keypad on it there need the screen needs to be a certain height it needs to the ATM needs to be a certain height off the ground um, EMV compliance you know um, you know there, there's there's a lot of different things that go into it ADA compliant you know there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that you just don't want to just buy some random ATM versus getting it from a reputable ATM dealer you know a person that sells them company that sells them you know all those things are already in, in place and programmed and you don't have to worry about that stuff okay now this is gonna be the last one before I start heading off and go and do this ATM and that way you guys can check this out I'm gonna go install this ATM like I mentioned but this is gonna be the last question most interesting thing that happened to you in your business in my atm business i had a few interesting things that happened but the most like crazy weird thing that happened and i actually have this on video if you go back to one of my early videos a day in the life of an atm business owner um i was going to fill up an atm and when i filled up the atm um, it was it's a dark location too. I looked kind of at the, all the way at the bottom, and I noticed something just different. So I ended up using my light on my phone, looked at it, and come to find out there was like poop and urine, and I don't know if it was from mice or what, but some sort of creature, some sort of animal was going into my ATM and pooping and peeing in there. And I actually had to clean it, which was pretty nasty. Um, but the good thing is they didn't chew on any wires, they didn't do anything that harmed the ATM. It just I just had to clean it. You know, that was kind of like the nastiest, weirdest thing that happened to me within my ATM business. Nothing too crazy, but it's something, you know, what I ended up doing was I ended up taping all the holes because, you know, you, you have like little slots on the ATM where you put the cord in and to plug it. And, you know, they have little holes that, that roaches and little creatures or critters can get into. So I covered it up with duct tape. And once I cleaned it, I haven't had that issue again since. So I'm gonna leave it right there, guys. Y'all stay tuned. That way you guys can check this out as I go uh, install this ATM. See you guys later. because it's like it's, it is around a, sev a residential area there's a lot of houses and stuff like that and it's like a little food market a little grocery store Hey you guys, so I'm back and I'm extremely tired. It's been a long day. Right now it's about 10.30 at night. Um, just finished doing my last training with the dogs and I just wanna finish up this video, kinda of give you guys an update on how things went down. 
So I got there to the location. Um, I actually started messing with it and programming it before he got there because he was running a little bit late, which is cool. Um, but we were able to tackle it. We did have some hiccups. We were having some issues with the wireless internet modem um, acting up a little bit. But overall, it was a great experience. The dude was amazing. He was a nice dude and someone that we will keep in communication. He was definitely a good person and um, I enjoyed the opportunity. And that's pretty much it, y'all. I hope this video helps you guys. If you find it valuable, if you find it, you know, being something that could be a blessing to somebody else, don't be afraid to share it. Don't be afraid to hit that like button. Both find my content helping you consistently. Be a new subscriber and uh, hit that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys with another video later. Hold up, hold up, hold up real quick before you guys go. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so by hitting this button right here. And if you want to check out some more of my content, be sure to click right here. Talk to y'all later.